promised you a cold version after the hot version, this is it. This is another installment of an introduction to Lip Reader Storytime. Uh, I'm on my porch. It's subarctic. I have my parka on. I'm not joking. And um, I want to invite you to come on a journey with me. And I told you about it on the hot version. If you saw it, you get a different take on this one. It's all impromptu. <clears throat> Beanie McPuffin was an exceptional man during his life. Um, he began in Budapest, Hungary as an orphan. Uh, he pulled himself up by the bootstraps. He found a way uh, to get plane fare uh, to Halitla, Mexico, in search of a myth that he had heard of in childhood about an ancient race of a, a civilization called the Chichimecas, which were the antecedents, were the fathers of the Aztec civilization. And um, they, were, they were known to be superhuman, just, just stronger than strong and have almost immortality. But they also were covered with these strange... Um, squirrel pelts it turned out to be that that they that was the origin of the of the pelting phenomenon that is um really worldwide now uh, all because beanie i mean everybody it's like who doesn't have a pelt right you you remember back in the day when uh you used to have like a liquid well, most of you won't remember this some might hello yeah, hello. How, how can I help you? Uh, this is Emma. Emma Schlock. It's who? It's a, it, It's who? It's Emma Schlock. Emma. I did, I did Are you? Okay, you okay, okay, okay. Did Did Bobby put you up to punking me, Emma Schlark? <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. The woman on the oh, 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 oh. Oh, this is Emma uh, Ashley's teacher. Yes. yes. Oh, I am so so sorry. Is is your name actually Emma Schlarp? Yes. Oh yes. my gosh. Bless your heart. And I, I mean, do you get sick do you get sick of that? I do. I do. It it, it never ends. Oh, this is so funny. So we've got this little bar. It's a social club, but it's to get around ordinances where you pay a dollar to get in and then you're a member of the social club. But uh, in, in um, where is that? Charleston at Foley Beach, Folly Beach. And uh, there's the first time we walked in there, the um, girl had on her shirt Brandy. Or no, that was her name tag. And I looked at her and I went, oh, are you a fine girl? And her jaw tensed and her, it was like she was going to explode. Oh and I said, I, I could see that I had just hit a, hit a nerve. And I was like, I started backtracking really quick. I'm like, oh, well, you know. And so, oh you know, I think she even took a shot to calm down. But totally, oh, that's that that's, a, that's an aside. So anyway, uh, how can I help you? I, did, is there something we didn't wrap up the other day? First of all, let me tell you, I really appreciate uh, your input because it's nice to know um, the perception of what you do, you know, for people that, that are uh, going to be taking charge of it here in what is going to seem like uh, a microsecond. You know how quickly things pass, but it's nice to know what the young people are thinking. Right, right. Well, my my um, my grandson is I've seen a demonstration. Uh, the, was, now that's your grandson that that's in school with Ashley. Right, uh, right. Well, see, hold on. Let me let me get let me get points here. It's um, Ma Mike. Is that right? Mike. Right. Okay, Mike, and he's the oh yeah, he's the one. His girlfriend's that cute little blonde on the front. What was, what was her name again? Right, Susie. So, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. The and little the little blonde that looked up at you and said this was the happiest day of her life. Right, right. Okay, right. yeah, cool. Right. So anyway, what's up? What's up with Mike? Anyway, he's interested in becoming a certified professional speaker. Okay. And he's going to be teaching at this school. 
And um, so we just wanted to talk to you about. Wait, that. wait. You so and, you mean so you mean he was inspired enough where he actually made a career decision based on that? That is so cool. Oh yeah, yeah. No, oh, not only that, he's excited about getting pelted. Really? How, yeah. How old do you have to be? Well, you know they they. Um, this was hard, but we managed to get it to go through. It doesn't apply in his case, but we can actually do it to newborns in certain situations where it's a life or death thing, you know? Because there are times just, why, why do most babies die? You know, most babies die because they have a, an insufficient amount of metabolic energy with which to sustain their life functions because they've been born so prematurely, right? Right, so right. just think about what happens when you basically give them um, all the energy that their body needs to do their bodily functions. So really, the, the, the latest ruling on that has been newborn with disease, without disease, I think it was four or five. But that would obviously be with consent of, of the guardian or whatever. Yeah, but we're we're seeing kids, uh, you know, down in the five six year old age range, starting to get it, and it's it's weird because the subsection um, that appears it appears to to be applying for are the people that want to be athletes, and so you see these really macho fathers coming in, you know, that always wanted to be that guy, and uh, now his son can be that guy. Uh, until the whole, it's going to be interesting to see where that whole thing plays out. But uh, I guess that's the verbose answer of he's old enough. Ah, okay. Well, he'll be excited to hear that. Well, even more, is, is he around any place? Because he's, he's I can, serious. so um, what I tell you what I will do for him, I will hand walk him through when he gets ready to do this because people don't understand there's so much nuance in 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 custom fitting a pelt for the recipient, and most wow. of the time this is a huge upcharge. You know, I think what we'll what we'll be able to do for him is get him in on that inner city program, uh, like we got what, what was it, Marcus? Was that his name? You know, I the, think it was. I, I think, think it was, was. Marcus. That's terrible. That we I'm just bad on names, yeah. but we can probably get him in on that where it will probably be free for him, especially since he's wanting to you know, go on into the profession. But what I was saying is there's there's a huge knowledge base that we normally do a lot of like molecular and submolecular analysis for to see exactly which subspecies of squirrel matches for which, for, for which donor and also what the expectations of the donor are. Because based, based on the different set of biogenic amines that you get out of the squirrels in uh, different kind of the stress hardening programs we put them through um, uh, and their genetics, uh, you know, I guess, I guess I made this analogy not too long ago to somebody and I think it's pretty apropos. It's kind of like when you have a really good wine knowledge base that carries through all these different very subtle parameters, but all of them are, are really important. So does that make sense? I'll walk him through all that, though, and get the best thing for him. Okay, all right. Because I know his main thing is that he wants to be the strongest squirrel hunter. Oh, he's... And since you, you can't shoot those little guys because they'll, they'll, you'll damage the pelt. you got to catch them. Oh, we, well, on top of that, see, you don't understand. We Let me tell you, let me run through. Is he around? And let me describe it to him just to make hey, sure he hey, knows. Mike, Mike, come here a minute. Come here a minute. We're going we're gonna to find out about your certification. Here we go. Okay. So, hey, so Mike, so you, so you actually want to be pelted and then want to go on and be an actual hunter. Is that right? Yes. How did you figure that out? That is so cool. What Was it the fact that you'd be powerful? Is that is that what it was about? Yes, completely. Yes, completely. Okay. Hey, or have you got bullies or something? Or where do you want? What are you going to do with all this power? Because I can give you a lot of power. Punch. Punch. Okay. Good enough. Okay. So listen, I'm going to go over a bunch of stuff, and if you don't understand it. 
Um, I'm sure uh, Emma will, it still cracks me up. <laughs> I'm sure Emma Schlarp will, uh, right. I'm sorry to make fun of your name, All but right. it's just one of my favorite movies. And the character is so sweet and just uh, sweet and naive, but in an endearing, not, not a demeaning way. You know, she's a lovely character. You, trust me, it could be worse. I knew a priest one time that he comes out and his name was Freddy Krueger. And you're like, Priest Freddy Krueger, are you kidding me? And, oh he's, he's, and, he, and he did the same thing you did. You're like, you're like uh, no, I hear it all the time. Um, but I'm going to run over some stuff and she can explain it to you later. And if you have any questions, you just stop. You just, you know, yank on her arm okay. and stop me anytime, okay? So the process from beginning to end is really complex. We, because we've got such a satellite network, um, uh, you know, that surrounds the earth, we can pretty well geo map and heat and hormone track um, pretty much around the globe. And so we follow really all species and subspecies of squirrels. And I'm not gonna, I won't go into how we tag them or I, that's really complicated or how we do the hormonal analysis. And, but yeah. we know, we have a great knowledge base. I was gonna say we know everything about, but we don't, we're just scratching the surface. But we've got a great knowledge base about what these different um, subspecies of squirrels, what kind of genetics they have and what kind of possibilities they have. Because the first thing we do is we bring the squirrel in and we actually, um, we get his nutrition up. We, you know, we make sure he's really, really healthy so he can produce everything he, we want him to produce. He, he is a, he is a hormone power factory to us. And so we, we, I guess for lack of a better word, this isn't accurate, but it's the old, we fatten him up thing. But we give them really good nutrition that's based on functional medicine and goes really to the submolecular level. So it's it's interesting diet sometimes of weird plants and herbs and different things. But we get the squirrel as healthy as it can be. And then we go in and we do a genetic modification on them. It's called a set, it's called uh, um, an iatrogenic single nucleotide polymorphase, uh, po uh, polymorphism uh, procedure. And it's basically where we take out a base pair out of their DNA. And when that base pair comes out, they are no longer able to synthesize whatever we want them. We basically genetic, we genetically alter the squirrel in order to produce whatever we want to produce. If some people, if somebody wants to be chill and they're just naturally hyper, you know, we can bring out the serotonin and the GABA and all that stuff and chill them out indefinitely. Um, or the other end of the spectrum, which is what he wants, which is, it's called biogenic amines. It's adrenaline, it's epinephrine, norepinephrine, you know, dopamine, mm -hmm. which, right. you know, is what is, I mean, that's, that's good stuff. And so to do that, what we do is we give it a single a nucleotide polymorphism for catecholomethyltransferase which is the enzyme that degrades your biogenic amine. So it's basically what breaks down your epinephrine. It breaks down your adrenaline. And so in the absence of that, your body's producing all this adrenaline just, and we'll, we'll, I'll tell you more about that in a second, but producing all this adrenaline and um, nothing's breaking it down. So they just, it's, it's quite something to see. But then on top of it, we put the squirrel in stress reconditioning after they've, you know, they've accepted the genetic modification. Um, we put them in uh, um, stress reconditioning, which is basically a series of electrified cages with certain other stressors like high pressure water jets. Um, you, I, I think you saw the, the squirrel, um, oh, what did they end up calling those? It's like a cattle prod for a squirrel because there's other cattle prods if you dial it were you there when i accidentally got the the unmodified squirrel prod the other day i don't think you'd come in the room yet had you yeah because you'd remember it because that i i forgot what it was i was like back in the day and uh I hit one of those little things that knocked it all the way across to the other side of the cage. It was like it was like a movie scene. It was weird. Oh 
but but so we get those kind of things that basically put them in assaulted fl- fight or flight situations, right. and um, you know let that adrenaline, uh, you know, really pump up. And we have got ways that we can tell when um, when it's at its peak. Because there's this one principle, and, you know, you see, I mean, the two Green Thumbs Gardeners did a great retrospective of this. It's about hormesis. Actually, they, they started some of the early studies on this for plants. But it goes back to the old, what does it, what does it kill you makes you stronger philosophy. It's a biphasic response. When you put any living organism through a stress... You, you can put it through a certain level of stress, so the amount of improvements you get after the stress is, is not only back to where you were, but it's way above. So whatever doesn't kill you really does make you stronger, but it's also biphasic. So that if, um, um, so if you go too far and the organism can't take it, then wah, 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 wah. Which is not what we want after we've invested all that, you know, genetic, you know, stuff in the in the research. So we so we genetically modify the squirrel to, to give us what we need, and then we basically dial the volume up uh, with different kinds of stress sensors, uh, and then after that, when when we're ready to go, we actually put them in kind of a suspended animation with uh, with some different inhalation things that. They just put them in kind of like uh, further into squirrel hell, if, if for lack of a better thing, but they're out. And right, then at right. the peak of whatever, or like in this case, it would be squirrel hell in the other direction. You know, we'd have them all chill on everything. But when right. we get that to the highest level possible, um, while they're sedated, uh, we have robotics that will go around and very precisely carve every... Um, square millimeter of the pelt out in a very precise way that makes a super clean cut Um, and uh, we're using a cold laser so it won't coagulate the vessels and therefore make them you know not useful Um, what we're playing with now that looks like it's going to be really in mainstream is we also cannulate the pelt through uh, a, a couple of major vessels and we start forcing um, our uh, hemoglobin substitution uh, that they're going to be on pretty soon through their their large vessels at the same moment we harvest the pelt and thereby put positive back pressure on the vessel. So the vessel for sure doesn't close because you do have some closures when that cold laser goes across it and that's in order to minimize that. So the, the reason this works is all because of our ability to perfectly match the vasculature down to an arteriolar size and we're even researching with capillaries so i mean if we get capillary size down it'll be like a seamless it'll be absolutely seamless but down to the arteriolar level and uh because you know back in the late 70s i don't know if you know this i'm kind of giving you a retrospective of what mcpuffin did but uh beanie invested in um fermion technology early, early on, which led on to quantum computing, which really is one of the reasons we're predominant in everything is we've got the ability to crunch more data than anybody. I mean, we laugh, yeah. at, we laugh at Google, Microsoft. We, yeah. we have a little figure, we have a little figure at work that we call it Microsoft. And we, and we, you know, and we prance it around in a mocking fashion, uh, just, you know, just because we can, I don't know. That sounds egotistical, but, but, but Beanie, Beanie was just enough of a, um, trendsetter that I feel like that's not too inappropriate. Sorry, off topic. Um, and so we're forcing the fluid out of the vessels and we exactly map the vessels on the squirrel pelt and then we exactly map the vessels on the uh, the person who's going to be accepting the pelt, the receiver. <clears throat> and then our computers lay in through 3D printing, tissue printing, an exact match between the vessels. And so we basically put it right in, the vascular flow's already established. And then all we have to do, and this is crucial because without this, this can be lethal. Um, in the case of... Um, um, 
the, you know, taking people up with more power. If you take them down, it's actually worse. They're not lethal, but they're kind of a vegetable. So when I say this is important, it's important. But we, we implant nanites that we, uh, that we train the person's uh, autonomic nervous system and higher cerebral functions to meld with in order to um, create a neural connection for that person to be able to use what they've got. You know, and at the beginning, it's kind of like if you had a, if you, if you put him into a car and you said drive the car and it was a clutch, you know, there'd be some like, you know, there'd be some, so it's kind of like when, when they're adolescent and they, 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 they don't really have their voice yet, you know, and their voice is changing to learn how to use one of these things. So, um, for the ones that we donate, um, we monitor and accept control of that for a period of time. And we can talk more about that later. Uh, but then basically what you've got is an unending reservoir of adrenaline that really does kind of give you superhuman strength. And if I remember right, he's not a, he's a little, he's a small guy, right? Right, right. Yeah, I was going to ask. Yeah, well, we'll do all the weight matching and everything. But. Uh, he has to pass some psychological tests too, which I mean that'll be easy. But uh, right. we, uh, the other day, we we had a, a child in. I think yeah, they were five. Parents wow. were re- parents were really creepy too. I mean, like uh-huh. like beyond Adam's family creepy, in oh, a wow. really in in a children under the stairs way kind of creepy. I don't know if you ever saw the movie, <laughs> but um, <laughs> we asked the kid. We're, we're, uh, uh, we're like, well, why do you, why do you want this? And he just had answers like to see more blood or, or to rip the pelts off of the squid. You know, we were just yeah. sitting over here going, oh my God, Hitler much? Um, oh my God. So anyway, let, needless to say, he did not meet, meet the benchmark that is required to receive a pelt. We do do this with some amount of, uh, you know, social responsibility. So anyway, uh, that that hopefully is the whole recap for you, buddy. Did you have any questions about any of that? Did you understand most of that? Oh, you I, I got a bad connection. Speak up a little louder. I'm sorry. It will make me grow taller. It will make you grow taller and faster and stronger. You're exactly right. Okay. Well, listen. Um, let's do this. Emma, let's, let me see what I've got open next week. Oh, and I was going to say, I think I know. Let me let me run backwards. I got onto the process, and I forgot to tell you. I know exactly. Um, uh, I know exactly the uh, uh, the species for him. I can even send it over to you if you want me to. Oh, that's but great. oh, it'll be a, it'll be a cross between a Madagascar and an Indian cell line. Um, because those, those, those are really big animals. I mean, like bigger than a chihuahua and they're multicolored and they're really cool colors. Did he want, did he want the, um, haired pelt to stand out or did he want the nude pelt that just, uh, see, and then we got to talk about all that. Does he want, does he want hair or no hair? Uh, you know, does he want any coloring on it? Does he want any symbol on it? Uh, where does he want it implanted? All that kind of stuff. Oh, wow. So, just let him be thinking about all that, and we'll, we'll talk again. That sounds good. Well, we've got an intake form. We'll send that over to you, and if you'll just fill that out and get it back to us, then, um, you know, I think, uh, I think that should be really good. Perfect, perfect. Well, we sure appreciate you uh, spending time with us. Oh, I I love this. I mean, I'm there's not. So no... excited. He's been talking about it not just nonstop ever since the demonstration. Well, you know, we we feel really good about what we do. We feel like we're making the world, uh, you know, safer and better, and just giving everybody more life and 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 more of the life while they're here. So, okay, Mike. Hey, listen, buddy. I'm proud of you, and we'll. Um, We'll be in touch, okay, Emma? All right. Hey, good. I tell you what I'll do. I'll have Barbara send over uh, a copy of Leaf, of Leaf of Faith. How about that? 
Just joking. Just joking. Don't hit me. Okay. See you guys later. All right. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. That's awesome. Oh, crap. Okay. I can cut this out later. I guess I got all that. Guys. Nice.